Hi guys, welcome to our video on Airbnb versus booking, like which is better for you as a host. Now, if you're watching this and enjoy this type of content and you're not subscribed, go ahead and click the subscribe button right now and click the bell then so you don't miss out on anything going forward, okay? Airbnb or booking is the question of the hour, as I mentioned, some of you are screaming both at the screen and to those I say, fair enough, but we're going to break down the pros and cons of each anyway. Even if you're on either service, I'd recommend you give this a watch as we're going to dive deeper than anyone does when signing up to anything. We're going to compare every aspect of the two. First, I'm going to tell you two origin stories. Then we'll talk about signing up, comparing the two. Then we'll talk about the types of guests that gravitate to each and the types of interactions you as a host could expect depending on where you decide to hang your hat. After that, we'll separate the men from the boys and talk cancellation and coverage or which service is for guests and which is for hosts. Then finally, we'll talk about the price and you want to stay until the end because then I might just give you my own personal thoughts on which is the better one to go with and why. So let's talk origin story. Booking was started in the Netherlands in 1998 when broadband was barely a thing. I think this is related to that intranet that everyone is talking about. Now it's the largest online travel agency in the world. It was started at a time when the internet was big and, and scary and the users tended to have to hand over their autonomy when signing up to something because they didn't know how to get involved in the internet. Software tended to be on disks and the cloud was not a thing except maybe a word to describe actual clouds. Now Airbnb, on the other hand, was started by two young men from San Francisco in 2007 with money raised by selling cereal branded with the faces of then rival presidential candidates John McCain and Barack Obama. True story, and it should tell you a lot. Airbnb is emblematic of the age when the internet got friendly with users and began to be used as the ultimate tool to cut through bureaucracy. Uber did to taxis, and these guys did it to hotels. Until they got so big, they started listing hotels too, which is why I'm talking about them. Now, we're a quarter century from one being born and 16 years from the other, and as sibling rivalries go, it's two guys on the outside that couldn't be more different from each other, but they're ultimately pursuing the same lady on this occasion, the holiday accommodation market. So how does one get on a date? Let's talk about signing up. So there's no getting around the fact that Airbnb is simply easier to get moving on. The backdoor display is all about easy of use. Now that's not to say booking isn't easy to get set up on, it's just better to do a bit of research before. I'll explain. Uh, on Airbnb, you sign up using your name, your property name, Google, Facebook, or Apple account, and they'll hold your hand the rest of the way. This insistence on hand-holding is preposterous. <laughs> well, I like it. There are six cancellation policies total with very, very clear names. And beyond that, not a whole lot of decisions to make, to be honest. On booking, being from the pre-friendly internet age, it's more business orientated and thus more complex. You've got three options to choose from, followed by three deposit options, like whether or not you'll take a deposit when people make a booking. Now it is a lot, and the decision directly reflects the amount and type of guests you'll get, but more on those factors in a while. Now luckily for you, booking has something called the booking partner forum community kind of thing, which is, it is, it's a forum for booking hosts and you can find sections with hoteliers discussing the pros and cons of virtually every aspect of the platform. Lucky for you, we've also done plenty of videos on booking and their policies like uh, this one on the booking preferred partner scheme, which I recommend you'd give it a watch. Now, when it comes to the type of guest you can expect, that's where there really is a dividing line, namely age actually. Millennials are roughly 60% more likely to book on Airbnb than booking. The types of traveler you can expect if you showcase on Airbnb looks forward to interacting with their host before, during, and after. They're after an experience as much as, if not more so than, the accommodation itself. You can see this reflected in the category bar that they have across the top of the site. It's as much about what kind of place you're staying in, so a ski lodge, an A-frame house, a shepherd's hut, as it is about where. It used to be the case, it wasn't much of a place for hotels to sell rooms, but that's no longer the case. The only thing is, if you wanna sell rooms on Airbnb, your property ought to have the kind of charisma that sells there, and you better be up for communicating with your guests because what your guests think of you is of the utmost importance on there, but we'll get to that in a little while. On booking, it's mostly people born 
earlier than 1980. They're like locations, pools, free continental breakfasts, and wake-up calls. If it sounds like I'm denigrating it, I'm not. It's just not the kind of experience I go for. But that's what they market, comfort and convenience. I'll put it like this. If I've got an early flight, I'll be going to booking and looking for a hotel by the airport. If I've got an early flight to somewhere and somewhere that I'm gonna go uh, work on my novel for a while, Airbnb might just be the ticket for me. See what I'm saying? A lot of hoteliers and property owners might remark they don't care so long as the room is booked. All I know is that if you're watching this, that's not you. You want good guests. In terms of discerning guests, there's really no competition because Airbnb gives you the option to rate and vet whoever stays at your property. It's Uber with no wheels. If a guest is messy, rude with you, or loud, and you give them a rating that reflects this, then there's every chance that the next time they try to book, they'll get rejected. You've done other hosts a favor. That's the power the hosts on Airbnb have that booking will never give to their host because for them it's all about the guests for better or for worse. You have no power to discern or reject a guest, only to switch the listing on or off and whoever comes will come. Then in terms of reviewing, rating, that is, on both platforms, this matters a lot. It affects how much you can charge and ultimately how high you can get your OR with a decent rev power. If I just spoke French to your ears, by the way, you need to head over to the hotel club right now and do a revenue management course. It's free for now, but it won't be forever. You have been warned. Anyway, ratings on both matter a lot. If you don't have a rating of nine or above on booking, take a hike for most customers, quite frankly. You're going to need to play the discount game for as long as you remain open. And as I'll detail in a video that's coming up very soon, that's a long game with no winner, just players with no choice but to keep slogging along at it. Luckily for you, we have this comprehensive guide on how to rank first on booking in your area. It's our most popular video by far, and that's because it works, give it a go. On Airbnb, the ranking dragon that everyone's chasing is that of a super host. If you have super host status, the sky's the limit with what you can charge in the high season and the amount of demand you'll get will see to it that you'll never have a guest that's less than respectful of your property. The thing is, holiday rental, B&B, hotel, whatever, you have to work for this one. I'd recommend everyone get a copy of um, Unreasonable Hospitality by Will Guy Dara and learn it by heart because it really is the high bar as hospitality playbooks go. If you're not much of a reader, I'd advise you to head straight over to the hotel club, do our customer loyalty course. As with revenue management at the time of recording, it's free, but who knows for how long. Head over there now, subscribe and get learning. Well, not now, after this video. Right. Cancellations and coverage. This one Airbnb runs away with and it's mostly because hosts themselves have set the standards. In either case, you, you can have loose as hell cancellation policies or strict as hell cancellation policies. The difference is that in Airbnb, the established standard is to pay up front or at least a deposit. And in booking, the opposite is the standard. In booking, if you look for a deposit or an upfront payment, it will affect how many bookings you get negatively. Consequently, most people opt for pay on site and cancellation allowed till way late in the day. And consequently, you will get more cancellations on booking than on Airbnb. That is just a fact. Are you serious? Now on Airbnb, you can also be loose as hell, but the only difference is that if your property looks good enough, people will pay because it's the more normal thing to do there. A strict cancellation policy is okay there because most people have one, so it will not affect the number of bookings you get so much as it definitely would on booking. As far as coverage goes, well, we've already mentioned you can rate bad guests badly and warn future hosts, but now Airbnb will also allow you claim damages up to $1 million from a guest. $1 million. Now it's not that they're just generous or, or good like that, it's simply that they now offer a guest add-on at the, at the booking stage that covers damages. So the option to claim is really just the flip side of an upsell for them, you know what I mean? Hosts say in terms of missing property, you know, lost things, stolen towels, TVs, I don't know, they're not very good. But by all accounts, they facilitate claims against guests like nobody's business. So you're relatively well covered there. Certainly more so than you'd be with booking. Why? 
because on booking, you are covered to the tune of absolutely zero. You're on your own. Booking facilitates bringing you and your guests together. How you fall apart, they completely leave up to you. Now, price. I'm going to say something controversial here. Both of these on a base level will cost you almost exactly the same. 15, 16%. You'll find the internet littered with claims that you can divide the cost on Airbnb and make the guest pay a little bit and it's just not true anymore. There's a small list and fair enough, the US is on it, but in most places of the world, the host pays the fee and that's that. Even in places where you can split it, uh, the, the host pays 3% and the guest then pays the 13%. It's been noted that it negatively affects the rate of people who finish the booking because the fee is only added on when billing is happening. And people are understandably a bit miffed when you know the price is now 13% higher than it was a minute ago when they first saw the listing. Merry Christmas, sir. Booking depending on where you are, has a standard 15 to 17% charge, and that's all she wrote. There are upsells, such as country rate, video here, or booking genius, video here, but the standard is around the same. Now, when it comes to getting paid, it has to be said that Airbnb is the more straightforward option. They pay on check-in and you'll get the money between one and five days afterward, depending on how you've got it all set up. If someone stays longer than 28 days, then you get paid again at the start of the next month. And that's it, that's how they do it. With booking, because not paying beforehand is standard, there's so many options to consider that it's a bit of a headache. Remember, if you insist on charging beforehand, they can facilitate you, but they don't actually have a payment system in place, so it's slow as hell paying out. And if you don't believe me on this, you can just check out any booking forum on the subject, or better yet, watch this very short video on the financial maintenance they did recently, which meant hosts wouldn't get paid for all of July right? They do this kind of thing. If you're on booking, you ought to have your specs set so you get paid directly on arrival by card. You'll want to set it up so you take a card imprint, not a deposit, when they book. This is the quickest way to get paid. That said, it's not as quick as if someone books directly. Well, gentlemen, you have my curiosity, but now you have my attention. There's the elephant in the room, folks. Get your own website in good nick and there'll be no touch in you. Sincerely, here's a stat. On either platform, 55% of guests will Google you afterwards to see if they can get a better rate by booking directly. So do yourself a favor and get a good website with an integrated booking engine and set it up so that when 55% of guests on booking or Airbnb look for you, it's something called the billboard effect, look it up, you're there waiting to take their money at a more competitive rate than on either OTA. If you don't have a website, go check out our course on that. It'll tell you everything you need to get started. It's practical, easy to follow, and has the potential to increase your revenue by, drum roll, about 10% per annum if you do it right. Now, the final call. Booking or Airbnb? Sorry guys, I hate to break it to you, but the answer is, both and have a good website that works for the 55%. I'm sorry, I know some of you were waiting on the guillotine, but I've not got one handy, all right? I'll say this though. When it comes to personal preferences, ask yourself the following. Is it most important to me to have my rooms full as often as possible? If the answer is yes, you want booking. Is it important to me that my reputation is such that I can charge an optimal rate without expecting it to negatively affect my business? Well, maybe Airbnb is for you. Now, question number three, am I willing to put in the work to grow my business so that direct bookings become my biggest asset? Yeah, you gotta get to know both. You know the pros and the cons from this video? We have a whole library of videos on here and on our website to help proactive hoteliers and property owners like yourselves to start sucking the marrow out of the hospitality life. So get on both, get a website going today, and get stuck into as much hotel club content as possible. That's my final verdict and I'm sticking to it. Now, Thanks to all of you who watched it to the end. Please subscribe if you liked it and comment as to why. And if you didn't, thanks very much for watching all of it. And um, please let me know in the comments how I could improve the content for next time. And head over to the Hotel Club, subscribe to the newsletter. We've got some big things coming up in the horizon that you do not want to miss out on, all right? Talk to you next time. See you soon.